Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at organic chemistry and the oxidation of alcohols. So, by the end of today's lesson, you should be able to describe alcohols as primary, secondary or tertiary. You should be able to write equations for the oxidation reactions of alcohols. You should be able to explain how the method used to oxidise a primary alcohol determines whether an aldehyde or carboxylic acid is formed. And you should be able to use chemical tests to distinguish between aldehydes, ketones, using either failing solution or Tollens reagent. Okay, let's go and have a look. So the functional group, the alcohol, uh, has the OH group attached somewhere along the carbon chain. And depending on that carbon chain depends on what sort of alcohol we have. And we saw this before when we looked at carbocations, that we can also have primary, secondary or tertiary alcohols and this is important when we look at their reactivity. So how do we decide if something is a primary, a secondary or tertiary alcohol? Well, we look at the carbon backbone, we identify where the alcohol group is, we then look at the carbon that the alcohol group is attached to and then we count the number of carbons that are attached to it. So if I look at this first example, the OH group, with carbon attached and there is one alkyl group or one carbon and therefore we describe this as primary. So here's my first example. We have the OH group, the carbon attached to it which is here which has only got the one carbon and this would be my example of propan 1-ol. Secondary alcohols, so along the same vein here, we look at the alcohol group, we look at the carbon that's attached to it, and this time there are one, two alkyl groups, so this is secondary. If I look at my example, similar, we have the alcohol group here, we look at the carbon that's attached to it, and we look either side, we've got one, two, the other one being a hydrogen, so this is a secondary alcohol. And this example here is propan 2-ol. Our final example then, the tertiary. So you might be able to guess. We look at the OH group, we look at the carbon, and this time we've got one, two, three alkyl groups or three carbons. Now look at my example here. We go the OH group carbon attached and this one's got one two three carbons so it is a tertiary alcohol and this particular example being two methyl propan two -ol. so you should be able to look at any given alcohol group and identify it as either a primary a secondary or tertiary alcohol. Now the rest of this lesson we're going to look at oxidizing alcohols and importantly the primary, secondary and tertiary have oxidized slightly differently. Well first of all we'll look at the oxidizing agent that we use for this and this is acidified potassium dichromate. Chromate. So acidified we can define as H plus and dichromate here is or potassium dichromate is K2Cr2O7. So potassium K2, dichromium is a Cr2 and the 8 bit is from the oxygens at the end there. All right. Importantly we see a colour change in this reaction. Acidified potassium dichromate, or importantly dichromate, is orange to start with. And if we observe a reaction, then the dichromate changes colour uh, to a new species and it ends up green. So if the alcohol is oxidised, the potassium dichromate, or the solution, goes from orange to green. That gives us our first check. So if we do this reaction with a primary alcohol, we observe a colour change from orange to green because primary alcohols are oxidised 
uh, firstly to aldehydes and then to carboxylic acids. We'll see in a minute that secondary alcohols will also react with acidified potassium dichromate. The solution will go from orange to green and secondary alcohols are oxidized to ketones only. And with tertiary alcohols, we observe no reaction and therefore the solution does not go from orange to green and indeed remains orange. So only the primary and secondary alcohols react. Okay, so we're going to first of all look here at oxidizing primary alcohols. And in these descriptions, in the square brackets O, that is what we describe as the oxidizing agent. We don't need to write out potassium dichromate, but in square brackets we have oxidizing agent. And we use that when we're writing our reactions. So we'll look at the first oxidation. So here we have a primary alcohol. The OH here is connected to a carbon. And it's only got one alkyl group here. It's two hydrogens, so this is a primary alcohol. And if we use an oxidizing agent, potassium dichromate with acid, the first oxidation is to form the aldehyde functional group at the end. And we also produce water in this reaction. So if you were to look at this, we're essentially, uh, if you compare the alcohol to the aldehyde, we're adding uh, or we're losing hydrogens and we're also combining that with oxygen. So we've lost two hydrogens from this first molecule and we also add the oxygen H2O. If we go and react this further, so if we were to keep heating with acid and potassium dichromate, the primary alcohol would get first oxidized to the aldehyde, and that aldehyde then gets uh, oxidized to a carboxylic acid. And we've added oxygen into this molecule if you compare the two things. So here there's no oxygen in the aldehyde, and here we've got an extra oxygen. Look at the equations. Equation 1, we have the oxidizing agent to the aldehyde plus H2O. And in the second step, we have the aldehyde plus the oxidizing agent making OH. And there's no addition of water at the end. So if we do this in one pot and we just heat, this reaction would go from the primary alcohol to the carboxylic acid. We wouldn't stop at the aldehyde. Well, that's unless we do a special sort of reaction. There's two ways that we can get these two different products. The first way here is if we're going to set up the following apparatus. Now you should have used this in class. We've got a round bottom flask uh, at the bottom and coming off the side here we have a Liebig condenser. And there's also a thermometer coming out the top. The Liebig condenser here has water coming in and water coming out of this cooling jacket. And importantly, the Liebig condenser is horizontal and having it set up in this way, coming out the round bottom flask, we have something called distillation apparatus. And we need to be able to recall this in an exam. And this is the setup for distillation. You need to be able to draw it and also be able to describe it. And doing this will form the aldehyde, preferentially. Why? Well, the aldehyde, if we look at it, will have a lower boiling point than the alcohol because its intermolecular forces are uh, going to be permanent dipoles rather than hydrogen bonding. It has a lower boiling point and therefore boils and then gets distilled, cools down, condenses off before going through to make the carboxylic acid. So now let's have a look at how we make the carboxylic acid. Well, we use a slightly different apparatus, but we still have the Liebig condenser. This time we have it set up above, and it's vertical rather than horizontal. We have the round bottom flask with our reagents, in this case the alcohol and the uh, 
acidified potassium dichromate, some sort of heat underneath, and this time the Liebig condenser collects the gas up here, cools down, and goes back down. So the reaction mixture circulates around, products are formed, cool back down, come back into the pot and can react again. Having it set up this way is called reflux. So the apparatus is reflux and we form the carboxylic acid, aldehyde for distillation. Okay, so oxidizing secondary alcohols, well we look again here, we've got two R groups, so we've got an alcohol, two R groups, so it's secondary. This time we've got our oxidizing agent, again it would be acidified potassium dichromate. We heat under reflux, so we've got acid, potassium dichromate, and reflux. Our equation, we get a carbon double bond oxygen with two R groups, so this time we form a ketone, not an aldehyde, and we also form water. We have to be able to recall this equation. This doesn't go on further to react as there's no hydrogen left attached to this carbon to make a carboxylic acid. There is no further reaction of the ketone with any more potassium dichromate. We said before that the tertiary alcohol so if we have an R group, an R group and an R group because there is no hydrogen attached to any of those carbon, there is no oxidation reaction, and the potassium dichromate remains orange. So the final thing to do then is to look at the tests, or how we compare between or distinguish between aldehydes and ketones. So imagine we've done an oxidation reaction, and we don't know if we've got an aldehyde or a ketone present, or perhaps we've just got some substances, we don't know if we've got an aldehyde or ketone. Both of these tests give positive results for an aldehyde, and no reaction for the ketone. So the first one we're going to look at here is the failing solution. Sometimes, in if you're from chemistry, you might, uh, from your biology department, you might have seen it as a Benedict solution. We tend to call it failings in chemistry. And this is where we have our blue copper 2 plus ions, uh, along with an ammonia solution. If we warm gently with some with the aldehyde, then we get a reaction occurring, and we form the red copper one complex, which is Cu two O. This only occurs with the aldehyde present, and not when the ketone is present. So this is a positive test for an aldehyde. In our second test, the Tollens reagent, this tends to be the one people remember, we have silver, which is the important compound here, and if we get a reaction occurring, we get the silver plus is reduced to silver metal, which forms a silver mirror, and it is only reduced if we've got something that can be oxidized, and this gives a positive test again for the aldehyde. So we have to know both of these tests, both of them positive tests for aldehydes, forming either the silver mirror or the brick red. Let's just write that down brick red copper complex. Great, so that brings us to the end of the lesson. You should now be able to describe alcohols as either primary, secondary or tertiary. We should be able to write equations for the oxidation reactions of the alcohols, that's importantly the primary and the secondary. Explain how the method used to oxidize a primary alcohol can determine whether we get an aldehyde or a carboxylic acid. And also use chemical tests to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones using either failing solution or Tollins reagent. Okay, that's all from me for now. Bye for now.